Oh man, it's so freaking cold. Oh Jesus. Oh Christ. Oh. Oh hey, I didn't see you there. Why don't you come on over? That's right. Join me by the fire. It's nice and warm. It's nice and warm. It's beautiful. Well, hello there. I'm glad to see you. We have a very exciting episode for you tonight. We are doing a Game Awards draft because they are next week, December 7th. It's a very exciting time for us. Hashtag gamers. Now, I thought it'd be fun if me and some tenors drafted some of our choices for those Game Awards. Why don't you stick around and watch us? Roll that intro. Play me. Play me. Play me. Let's go. Welcome back to Home Scream. Today I am joined by some fine folks. Why don't you introduce yourself? Well, uh, my name is Abe, uh, Spider Man's number one fan, and they're going to win every single award at the game show. I don't care what you say. I believe it, I believe it. Okay, moving down. Uh, I'm Christian. You already see me on air, so me making this appearance. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, that's beautiful. Well, um, we'll move right into our Game Awards drafts uh, real quick. Let's pull up the first slide here for our most anticipated game next year. Now, this is almost like a, a precursor to a real award because this is obviously just the most anticipated. And I will start and we'll move down from my right. I'll start and say that my most anticipated game for next year is, of course, Hades 2. Hades 1 was a great game. I loved it a lot. It had a lot for me. It had, you know, great combat. It's one of the only roguelikes I've ever, ever liked and had lots of gay people, which I'm always in support of. Now, moving to my right, uh, what do you choose for most anticipated uh, game? I don't know. Uh, well, I haven't really seen a lot of these games, but I would probably see, say Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, mostly mm. because I've heard a lot of like the saga in general. So I know a lot of people are super excited about that, and since I don't really know any of the other games, other than Tekken 8, but I don't really like fighting games. Yeah. <laughs> Outside of Mortal Kombat, I don't play any fighting games, so yeah. I think Final, Span Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is my most anticipated game. I think that's a good choice. Moving down. Um, personally, mine is Star Wars Outlaws. Um, I'm a big Star Wars fan. Uh, I think most of the Star Wars games that come out recently have been pretty good. Well, those from Respawn, they're great. EA, mm. Yeah. It's a little more iffy. <laughs> it's a little more iffy. Um, and I'll be honest, like I haven't played Final Fantasy Hades II or the Yakuza games, although I did try out Fantasy I did try out uh, the remake of Seven. Kinda got halfway through it, so playing, but um I guess I do think that uh, Star Wars that was. It would it would probably be rebirth that wins most anticipated just because it has mm. such a huge following. I can understand that. That's yeah. a good point. I don't think we have, or we're in any major disagreement yet yeah, over our choices. Really. I think that's all <laughs> very solid for most anticipated games. I think uh, the next few awards will definitely put us more <laughs> at each other's throats. We're so gonna be let's let's move right on to our next our next slide, our next uh, thing. Best performance of this year. No. Um, we've got a we've got a lot of great talent from this. A wide range of people actually. Um, and we'll start with me. This one is a hard choice for me because uh, it, it's really, for me, it's between Cameron Monaghan, uh, Melanie Leibert, and Neil Nairborn, um, both, all from great games. Uh, Cameron from Star Wars Jedi Survivor, obviously, Melanie from the amazing Alan Wake 2, and Neil Nairborn from probably the best uh, RPG ever made, Baldur's Gate 3. Um, and I think I eventually have to settle just on Neil because of what he brings to Asterion. And obviously, just the amount of work that goes, there's so much you can do in Baldur's Gate 3. You can have a million uh, playthroughs and not see anything. And it's just honestly astounding. So I have to give it to Neil there. Uh, moving down. Uh, listen, I love Idris Elba. He's my homie. He's a great actor. But I got to give it to my boy Yuri not, uh, Lowenthal. Like, mm. He's done such a great job with Spider-Man. First game, amazing. Second game, even more amazing. 
And I just gotta say, he does a great Spider-Man. And as a he, Spider-Man enthusiast myself, <laughs> he has to take it. He, yeah, he, he does have a great Spider-Man for sure. I think that's a very strong choice. <laughs> yeah. And moving on to Christian. Uh, I mean, I am kind of torn between Cameron and Yuri. I um, mean, they both did great in their respective games. Uh, although I am leaning a bit towards Yuri just because you get more of his emotional chops throughout the entire game, whereas Cameron, I feel like the emotional chops come through towards the later half of the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it does make me excited to see the uh, sequel to Sur Jedi Survivor. Mm. I, think that's, I think those are all strong choices as well. I for sure agree with you that Cameron's performance, while good, is not as dynamic as Yuri's or a lot of the other actors in this role. Um, I, even though I still give him major <laughs> props, I do yeah. think he's... I, if I had to guess who would actually get it, I, I'd probably edge towards Yuri as well. Yeah. Not my personal favorite performance, but I definitely think he, he's a strong contender for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, moving on to our next slide, uh, this beautiful best RPG. Now, this is this can be a little contentious. I know we have some Starfield fans in the in the <laughs> audience in the studio, but Starfield is a bad game made by a bad company for no. bad people. Uh, now, you have to wait. For, I have to say, make my points first. Um, so, for me, I would cast my vote for best RPG for um, Baldur's Gate 3. Obviously, I said it earlier; it's the best RPG ever made. I definitely could. It's not just like best RPG of the year, it's best RPG in this century, possibly. Um, and I don't, I don't think there's any competition. Um, I think definitely Baldur's Gate 3 takes this home. Uh, uh, I, I do think there's competition, actually. I do mm. think Starfield is There's a, no I way. I, I, like I said, I want Starfield. I'll let you finish, to, but. <laughs> I think Star, I like Starfield. I don't think it's gonna win, but I really hope it does. But yeah, I've heard a lot of people like, do like talk a lot about Baldur's Gate 3 mm -hmm. and as much as it hurts me <laughs> it'll probably win it but I really want Starfield to win it. Um, I'm not partial to either or well I mean I am somewhat partial to Baldur's Gate 3 just because well it's Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> I mean Starfield no I've seen gameplay footage of it no I play like a few minutes worth um it's it's all right like I know you have to kind of get into it a bit to really enjoy it, but mm. I mean, it does have the Bethesda title attached to it, and considering the things they've done, mm. ugh, Not it, it does kind of weigh it game down. Weigh it down, for sure. <laughs> um, to, to further argue against Starfield, it's, I mean, I have not played it because I don't want to. I've seen gameplay of it, and it's the classic Bethesda. Bethesda has kind of transformed don't in recent years has kind of transformed into recent years at, to another Ubisoft where they make big, expansive worlds with nothing in it. I think Starfield and a lot of the previous games, including Fallout 4, uh, Fallout 76, and Skyrim, fail on the role-playing part of a role-playing game instead of just being, they're instead just kind of like fun games to play. And I definitely think that in a game, in a year of heavy hitters, Starfield <laughs> did not even make a drop in the ocean of gaming this year. Not to get too harsh on it, but I'll always talk down on Bethesda. <laughs> uh, so I just to further argue, Starfield, there's no way Starfield wins anything, especially not over Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they made <laughs> some questionable decisions, especially with a lot of the games. I, uh, they have, like I said, Starfield was a good game, but I wish I would have had more of a chance to play because I'm more of a PlayStation. I did play it mm, yeah. on the Xbox, but yeah, I, I just, I'm not a big fan of the theme in Baldur's Gate. I'm, I'm more like into the space theme. Of more Starfield. into sci-fi. That's yeah, understandable. More into sci which is why I'm more a fan of Starfield. But I can see everyone's point of view on when they say Baldur's Gate mm -hmm. 3, they want it to win. Yeah. Plus, it's, I don't know. It's a transformative experience, I can tell you that. Plus, I checked Metacritic. Metacritic? <laughs> and then Baldur's Gate's <laughs> yes. definitely winning. Yeah. It's definitely going to win. It. Sure. Well, with, uh, and do you have something to say? Um, I mean, I will say in a site defense of Starfield, I mean, I don't think you're really supposed to explore every planet, like, mm -hmm. or, you know, every inch of every planet of the game. I mean, you don't really just, exp I mean, if you kind of compare, I mean, I shouldn't, but if you kind of compare it to uh, No Man's Sky mm -hmm. or other, you know, MMOs like Star Citizen, well, Star Citizen, Lead, Dangerous, you're not really supposed to explore everything. <laughs> yeah. I definitely can understand that, but if, I mean, I'm just, Bethesda has kind of a bad running track right they now. They've had a bad reputation recently, yeah, yeah, that's for sure. for multiple reasons. <laughs> um, well, with that said, we'll move on to our next slide here. Um, best score in music. 
uh, we got some great, there, there's been some great yeah. uh, soundtracks this year for sure. I definitely think we have a lot of strong contenders for best sound, soundtrack. Um, Baldur's Gate 3, Final Fantasy, High Friday Rush, Legend of Zelda, and Alan Wake all have amazing soundtracks. I will say, um, as much as I love Alan Wake 2, it is a survival horror game, so the music kind of takes a backdrop, aside from the full musical sequences, which are great. But, I mean, it serves a purpose well, but you're not going to get songs you want to listen to a lot yeah, of time, like I do with a lot of another game tracks. And as much as I love Baldur's Gate 3, I do think a standout uh, for its score music this year is Legend of Zelda, Breath of, uh, not Breath of the Wild, sorry, Tears <laughs> of the Kingdom. I know what year it is. Um, I definitely think that is the best score music of this year. Uh, the Nintendo team always knocks it out of the park and then doesn't release official versions of soundtracks in the United States, which sucks. Please, Nintendo, I want to listen to the soundtrack. <laughs> um, but definitely Zelda takes score music. Uh, over here uh, well, I, was, <clears throat> I would say, I was going to say All in Wake 2 as well. It's a great soundtrack. I don't listen to gaming soundtracks outside of like playing the video game so that's not a place that bothers me. Mm. But yeah, like you said, Nintendo always blows it with their soundtracks and like they're magnificent. So I'm gonna have to go with Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom as well. Yeah, that's a strong choice. I mean, I thoroughly enjoy any sort of soundtrack from games like, especially from uh, Breath of the Wild. Mm. Like, I know it's Tears of the Kingdom, but even back then in Breath of the Wild, it was pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom. It's, it's still pretty good, yeah. but uh, I have to go with Alan Wake 2 just because um, I know a few weeks ago during the All Nighter, someone played the clips of that was, Alan Wake. That was for oh, yes, I remember that. I remember and that. I gotta be honest, those few songs, they rock. They, Dude, they rock. They, I forgot about that. Old Gods yeah. of Asgard, the fictional band in Alan Wake, is one of, honestly, a legitimately good band. You should listen to it. They're, they have a compilation album releasing on December 8th, and I definitely think, I'm very excited for that. Um, my, my, I, I don't really count those though because they're not part of like the ambient soundtrack. Part of the story. They are right. part of the story. Oh, well, they're well, very I, instrumental in the story. It I actually, haven't played much of the game. <laughs> no, but uh, but I just there's not that they have those really good parts yeah. and the other music is good. It's just like it's not what I'm looking for yeah. in a re-listenable soundtrack for sense. sure. That's oh, understandable. I get ambience. I, I yeah. love ambience. Yeah. Either way, I think these are all games with great music anyways. Definitely. Uh, so I think there's a lot of good discussion to be had there. Well, we'll move on to our next slide here um, for our next category, Best Art Direction. Now this one, this one is, I like this, I like Art Direction as a, a category because it, it can be very wide. Mm -hmm. You can look at, there's a lot of different ways art can be directed, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I think this has a lot of strong contenders as we hear Alan Wake again appearing, Hi-Fi Rush, Liza P. <laughs> Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and again, Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. They all are great options. I uh, definitely could see, and any, like I've said this before, this is a year of great games. And any other year, any of these games would have just steamrolled it. But because there's so many heavy contenders, they can't. Um, mm -hmm. But for what I would put for best art direction uh, for this year is definitely Alan Wake 2. It has amazing visual design uh, in its characters, in its environments in its enemies and especially its use of live action sequences and other pieces of art like the music we previously mentioned uh, just puts it above and beyond what I feel like a lot of other games have achieved in art uh, and how it's used in recent years and I definitely think that Alan Wake 2 is the best art direction this year for sure. I do, I don't know. I haven't played Hi-Fi Rush but I've seen gameplay and trailers of it and I love their animation and the whole art direction they took with that game. But the way, I don't know, the way Alan Wake immerses you and the whole thing around it, I just think it's a lot better. <laughs> like, I love the art in Hi-Fi Rush, but the way they took in Alan Wake too, that, that, like the whole theme, I just think they, they should take it. Alan yeah. Wake 2 should take it as well. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna confess, I haven't played Alan Wake 2, and so <laughs> I've, I've, I've been trying to avoid any images just so I'm not spoiled, but I am going to assume that, like, I have played the, the first game, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna assume that they took, did the same thing. It's, it's almost even better, to be, to be honest, okay. in terms of its art direction, so, and its involvement of live action. It's, it's honestly technically impressive. Mm. It's a, they did, like, real directing. There's a 20-minute skippable, like, short film in, in the game. <laughs> Uh, which nice. is really good. So I definitely think 
Is that what you'd pick, Alan Wake 2? Um, from what you've seen, or do you want? Well, to... from what you said, no. I'd say it's. I mean, it's up there. Like I was, gonna, I am gonna say no. High fire rush, like just cause, like yeah. like Abe said, the the animation looked pretty good, like from what I've seen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like. Yeah. High fire rush, also very strong yeah. contender. I'm for just sure. a really big geek when it comes to <laughs> animation, anything in general. Yeah. So that's why high fire rush. I wanted to put it up there, but yeah, Alan Wake 2 just has something Not else that you fire. can't deny. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely agree with that statement. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad we reached somewhat of consensus on that. <laughs> uh, we'll move on to our next point here. Um, best narrative. Now this one is where it starts to get a little more controversial. Um, especially among us at the table, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to kind of step away from what I've been angling to for, I think, a lot of this. And I'm actually going to not say Baldur's Gate 3 has the best a narrative. Surprise. It's a good <laughs> It's a good narrative. Don't get me wrong. BG3, great narrative. But I definitely think Alan Wake 2, I mean, I haven't finished BG3, but I played a lot of it, so I know it's good. Mm -hmm. But Alan Wake 2 delivers on what it wants to do and knows what it is exactly and it delivers it so well and I definitely think Alan Wake 2 has one of the most unique narratives I've, I've seen in media at all and definitely one that fully utilizes the fact that it is a video game to achieve that narrative so I don't think Alan Wake 2 takes best narrative. Well. I would go with Alan Wake too, but <laughs> as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, and the way the story is was told in the video game, especially like the first one was already a masterpiece in my opinion, uh -huh. but the second one just takes it to a whole nother level. And I'm like, this is mwah, chef's <laughs> kiss. So yeah, I'm sorry, but I just gotta give it to Spider-Man too, as much as it hurts me for Alan Wake. <laughs> it's a, it, like a, it's a game of it's a year of great games for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. I also got to go with Spider-Man 2. I mm. mean, I, I love the original. I like Miles Morales and this yeah. one. Um, it, it takes the best of both of those <laughs> previous games yeah. and it makes an already great game just greater. Yeah. Yes, like, I definitely uh, agree with that. I haven't got around to Marvel Spider-Man 2 yet because I bought Alan Wake instead of it, <laughs> um, which is just how it worked out. But I, I definitely agree that from what I've yeah. seen, Spider-Man 2 has a great narrative. I can't really argue with that, but I just think Alan Wake's two narrative is better. They're two, Sorry, eh. it's just better. <laughs> They're two great narratives, but like I said, I love Spider-Man, and in any other year, mm -hmm. it, probably any of these five games could have taken it home, yeah. but it's a game where they're all fighting against each other, where yeah. it's hard to choose just one. For sure, it's a, it, it's a, it's a year of hard choices, yeah. for sure. I definitely agree with you there. Um, well, we'll move on to our, our next section here which is Game of the Year. <laughs> Ooh, this it's is where it Game starts. of the Year, baby. <laughs> this is the big one. Uh, this is exciting. We have Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Marvel Spider-Man 2, the remake of Resident Evil 4, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and Legend of Zelda Tears of the, Wild, uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Not Tears of the Wild, sorry. <laughs> uh, kinda surprised, I'm kinda, I was kind of surprised when I saw Super Mario Bros. Wonder on here because it was kind of a late joiner. But I definitely understand. I've seen a lot of good things about it. I can understand why they put it on there. Um, I didn't feel like we've said it a billion times, but I'll say it again. Year of hard choices, so many great games. Any other year, any of these games would have easily won, but because they're all in the same year, it's going to be a fierce competition. Uh, they all have their merits, they all have their really big successes, but I think out of all of them, taking in all aspects of what a game is and what you can achieve with games, I don't see a world in which Baldur's Gate 3 doesn't take it. Um, it easily wins, in my opinion. All these other games are good, but they cannot reach uh, BG3 in what it, what it has achieved, both culturally, uh, technically, and just in a poor, a poor boy's RPG-loving heart. Uh, there's no world in which Baldur's Gate 3 doesn't easily sweep Game of the Year. I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I'm, I'm going to have to disagree with that. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I said, Spider-Man 2. That's like, the and a lot of these games, like, we've, we've been waiting more than two, three years for a sequel for all of these games. Like, I'll wait, I'll wait 13 was like, years. 13 more than years. 10 years, I was going to say. I don't know Baldur's Gate 3, how much was the wait, but I know it was it's a, a good few years. Yeah, Spider-Man 2 and Tears of Kingdom was about the same, like, yeah. five, more than five years. Since I, this launch of yeah. the Switch. Yeah, <laughs> so it's been a long time. I don't see a remake winning. I'd, I, also don't, I'd also don't see Resident Evil 4 I've, winning. I've only played uh, the VR version of the game, so I can't <laughs> really say much. I'm enjoying it so far. I'm not done with it, but I'm enjoying it so far. Super Mario Bros., I love Mario, but it's not winning it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, in my opinion, Spider-Man Spider 2 has to take it home. It's mm -hmm. such a good game. 
It's such a great character. Like, it's such a great everything. I know Baldur's great. Uh, Baldur's Gate Three Baldur's, has Baldur's everything. Is great. <laughs> has everything going for it to win. But like, Spider-Man Two got snubbed when they didn't win Game of the Year. So I really. What did they lose it to? Do you remember? I, I, I think it was two, uh, the other Zelda game. Was it Breath of the Wild? I think it was Breath of the it Wild. It might have been Breath of the Wild. I think it was Breath of the Wild, but I'm not sure. Wait, I think Spider-Man that came out in 2018, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'm not sure. I don't it, even remember. Was it Sekiro or was it God of War? Oh, oh it, it might have been God of it War. It was probably God of War. I, yeah. God of War is really good. They, no, I they, can see it. I can understand that. They've gotten snubbed once. So I really <laughs> want Spider Man 2 to win again. But seeing everyone's opinion, I've, I've talked to friends and they're all saying Baldur's Gate yeah. uh, 3. Yeah. But in my heart, yeah. in my fanboy heart, <laughs> I want Spider Man 2 to win it. Wow. Um, I mean, honestly, they are all pretty good games. Uh, Baldur's, Gate, Baldur's Gate 3, definitely. Although I think it will face some steep competition from Tears of, the King Tears of the Kingdom. I mean, I've seen all sorts of gameplay footage of people making all sorts of amazing yeah. constructs with oh the graphic God. system. Like, I've seen like people make characters or make items and objects from other games. I've also seen some inappropriate things. Well, <laughs> let's keep it. Let's keep it TV ten safe here. I will. I will. I'm not going to specify. I'm not going to specify. I, I promise. But um, yeah, I mean, Spider Man Two, maybe mm. Mario Brothers Wonder, probably not really. No. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Um, Resident Evil Four. I mean, I am surprised that Resident Evil Four is on the list of Game of the Year. No, I'm also it shocked that it fun. made it. Mm -hmm. I'm still surprised that Resident Evil made it. It's, I think it's transformative enough to where it fits, but I just don't see enough people voting for the remake. Yeah, same. Um, but I definitely think that's strong choices. I, I'm curious, Abe, what specifically about Marvel Spider-Man Two that you think deserves Game of the Year? Is, I don't it, know. is it narrative? Is it it's, technical design? It's the design? story. It's the way the game is played. Mm -hmm. Like. You had it like before, like yeah, you saw it in Spider-Man One, like the whole gameplay mechanics, but it's something that you don't always see. And there's a lot of games that have tried rep, like other Spider-Man games and other games in general, that have tried replicate that Spider-Man formula, and yeah. it just doesn't work out as fluid and as great as Spider-Man Two is, and the story, like I said, yeah, Chef's kiss with the whole Venom <laughs> thing, everything. Like I don't know, I just I just love it so much. That I've heard I've heard lots of good things. I can understand yeah. that. I mean, well, I will say that like the technical aspects of Spider-Man 2, I mean, you can fast travel anywhere on the map in like less than, what, yeah. two seconds? It's yeah. impressive, for yeah. sure. Very impressive. Gaming um, consoles are finally starting to catch up to PCs, which is impressive, to, to be <laughs> honest. It's kind of frightening. I've always bit. been a PlayStation, uh, yeah. PlayStation fanboy, I'm sorry. I just Same. moved to PlayStation this generation, and I'm not regretting it. Well, uh, before we hop out, we'll just restate our Game of the Year opinions. So we'll put some money down on who we think, who <laughs> we think is I'm a broke college win. student. I don't know about putting money down. Metaphorical money down. All right. So I'll say Baldur's Gate 3. I'll put down 50 bucks it wins Game of the Year, for sure. I'll put... Same. Yeah. I'll put $25 that Baldur's Gate 3 wins it, and another <laughs> 25 that Spider-Man 2 You can't multi-pot, eh? <laughs> oh, choose I can't. Choose okay. one. Choose okay. one. We're not... You have to choose one. <laughs> I love Spider-Man, but like Baldur's Spider Gate has everything going for it, but uh. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Like Whoa. I love Spider-Man too, but seeing all the critics on Baldur's Gate three, yeah, it's not hard to argue that it it probably has the biggest chance of winning Game of the Year. Yeah, for sure. So. Well, <laughs> thank you too for joining me right mm -hmm. uh, today. Um, that's all I had for you guys tonight. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, we will be right back after this message. Thank you so much for watching tonight. I really appreciate it. Next week is our last episode of the season and is the semi-annual Smash Tournament. I hope you are excited. Good night and good games.